Hey everyone, my name's Jake, and in this video, I'm gonna go over everything that you're gonna learn in a mechanical engineering degree. Let's go. I might be a little bit biased, but I'd say that the education that you'll get in mechanical engineering is the most broad when compared to all the other engineering disciplines. What did you say? Because in order to be a good mechanical engineer, not only do you have to have proficient knowledge on mechanical systems, but you also have to have a solid understanding of chemical, electrical, civil, computer, and software engineering. So by majoring in mechanical engineering, you're gonna receive a, a really diverse education. It's a great choice for anybody who loves problem solving and dealing with physical systems. But what kind of things are you gonna be learning and studying day after day if you were to major in mechanical engineering? That's why you clicked on this video, right? So I've broken it up into seven categories and let's jump right in with category number one, everybody's favorite, math. There's no getting around it. Mathematics is the bedrock of any engineering degree. So we have to start here, right? So I'm gonna go over briefly every math class that you have to take and why it's important to the degree. Okay, so first up we have algebra. In algebra, you're gonna learn how to manipulate functions and solve for unknowns and isolate variables and graph functions, right? Algebra is probably the most widely used tool that you're gonna have throughout your entire engineering degree. Almost every class you take, you're gonna use a little bit of algebra. Next up, we have trigonometry. In trigonometry, you're gonna learn all about shapes and ratios and angles, right? But most importantly, you're gonna learn about triangles. Triangles are everywhere in engineering, especially in mechanical engineering. So in trigonometry, you'll really learn all the tools and different tricks and equations that come with triangles to solve all sorts of engineering problems. Next up, we have calculus. And in mechanical engineering, you're gonna to have to go through calculus one, two, and three, just a heads up. So calculus is the branch of math that deals with continuous change, right? Continuous position change, temperature change, or time change. You're gonna learn about integrals, derivatives and limits. These tools are gonna to allow you to solve problems where variables like speed, position, and temperature change with time. And lastly, in math, you're gonna learn ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations. So these high-level math courses are gonna teach you how to model and predict how moving physical systems will behave into the future. Things like oscillation, wave behavior, and heat dissipation. Category two, static systems. So just to clarify, a static system is just something that's unmoving, right? It's not moving. It's like a bridge or a column or a beam. So the first course in this category is physics, physics one. So in physics one, you'll learn all about Newton's laws of motion and how to apply them. You'll learn about momentum, gravity, friction, and velocity. And you'll learn about how to utilize trigonometry to determine the forces and angles of those forces on a given object. The next course is statics. So in statics, you're gonna dive much deeper into the analysis of static systems. Some of the topics include force vectors, moments or rotational force, center of gravity, friction, force balancing, and just a much more in-depth analysis of beams, trusses, columns, and a lot of other static systems. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. That kind of stuff really helps the channel grow. And if you or anybody you know is looking to study engineering or any other STEM degree, be sure to check out my book. You know, I wrote this book to serve as a true universal guide, right, a roadmap to show how anybody and everybody can have success in engineering or any other STEM degree. It's getting great reviews so far. You can go on Amazon and see for yourself. It's available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. So I'll put links in the description for everything. Thanks for the support. Category number three, materials. So first up in this category, we have chemistry. So in chemistry, you're gonna learn all about the periodic table of elements, liquids, gases, solids, right? Stoichiometry, you're gonna learn about uh, bonding and intermolecular forces and structure. And then you also learn how to balance chemical equations. Next up, we have strengths of materials. So in strengths, you're gonna learn all about how different materials and shapes deal with stress and strain, right? So other topics include plasticity, elasticity, fatigue, creep, yield, and material failure. So last up in this category, we have material science. In material science, you're gonna dive much deeper into the structure of materials. You're gonna learn how to predict the properties and behavior of a given material based on its microstructure. You'll also learn about atomic bonding, melting point, thermal expansion, crystalline materials, and diffusion. And you'll also learn about what controls the electrical, optical, and thermal behavior of a given material. 
Category four, dynamic systems. So static systems are things that aren't moving. Dynamic systems are things that are moving. So first up in this category, we have dynamics. In dynamics, you're gonna really expand pretty thoroughly on what you already learned in physics one. So topics include kinematics, velocity, acceleration, uh, momentum, vibrations, uh, impact, and conservation of energy. Next up, we have fluid mechanics. This is one of my personal favorite courses, by the way. So in fluid mechanics, you're gonna learn all about how different fluids you know, move and behave in different environments, right? So you're gonna learn all about fluid kinematics, hydrostatics, Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids, boundary layers, laminar versus turbulent flow, and conservation of mass and momentum. So next up, we have thermodynamics. In thermodynamics, you're gonna learn all about energy and how it's used and utilized to make things work, right? So the topics include energy cycles, engines, heat, work, entropy, enthalpy, efficiency, refrigeration cycles, and conservation of energy. Okay, so last up in this category, we have heat transfer. So in heat transfer, you're gonna learn all about how heat moves between different mediums, right? So you'll be able to calculate and predict and eventually control the movement of heat in your design. So topics include conduction, convection, radiation, heat exchangers, and finite element analysis. Category number five, robotics and programming. So first up in this category, we have physics two. So in physics two, you're gonna get a real kind of in-depth crash course into electricity and magnetism and how you can use math or calculus specifically to analyze those things, right? So the topics include electrostatics, electric fields and potentials, magnetic fields, current flow, electric circuits, resistance, capacitance, inductance, electromagnetism, and optics. So next up in this category, we have electrical engineering. In electrical engineering, you're gonna really build upon uh, the knowledge that you got from physics too. So you're gonna get really more in depth with electric circuits and how to analyze and predict resistance, current flow, voltage, capacitance, inductance, right? Other topics that you're gonna cover are Kirchhoff's laws, diodes, amplifiers, power, actuators, and transformers. Next up, we have computer science. So in computer science, you're gonna get a good intro, a good crash course into computer programming, right? You're gonna learn uh, basic coding language and how computers are programmed and execute different commands. You're gonna learn how to create your own programs for modeling and analysis of engineering systems. Other topics include loops, functions, image processing, sensors, microcontrollers, and mechatronic systems. So last up in this category, we have mechatronics. In mechatronics, you're gonna learn everything robotics, right? Linkages, control systems, microcontrollers, sensors, actuators, programming, servos, and motors. Mechatronics was really one of my personal favorite courses because it's, it was really where I felt like all my knowledge was coming together into something really useful. And then to add to that, mechatronics is usually project-based, which makes it really fun. So you'll, you'll design and build a robot throughout the course. And the robot is supposed to perform some kind of special task or compete with the other robots in your class at the end of the year. Super fun. Category number six, data analysis. So first up in this category, we have numerical methods. So in numerical methods, you're gonna learn all about you know, how to create and utilize computer programs that you make to solve some pretty complex engineering problems. This class is pretty, pretty tough, but it's pretty fulfilling in that it, it, it shows you how to build your own tools through computer programming to solve some pretty hard problems. So some of the topics include root finding, interpolation, approximation of functions, integration, differential equations, direct and iterative problem solving, and curve fitting. So next up in this category, we have probability and statistics. So in this class, you're gonna really learn how to deal with large amounts of data. You're gonna learn how to utilize statistical methods and programming to find trends and useful information within large amounts of data. Other topics include probability theory, distributions, and random sampling. Okay, so lastly, we have category number seven, manufacturing and design of mechanical systems. So first up in this category, we have manufacturing. So in manufacturing, you're gonna learn all about the different manufacturing processes and how they're utilized on all the different materials. In this course, you're also gonna learn about material removal or machining, material forming, like bulk deformation and sheet metal forming, casting, polymer manufacturing, composites manufacturing, welding, additive manufacturing, 
micro and nano manufacturing, and quality control. So lastly, we have senior design. So senior design is kind of where it all pays off, right? Where you can kind of spread your newly formed engineering wings, so to speak. So it's a fully project-based course. It lasts a full year, and it's where you can really kind of sink your teeth into a big, meaty project. So your, your professor will either come to you guys with a list of projects that you and your team can uh, choose from, or you can go to your professor with an idea you have. And they're pretty good about approving these as long as they're, you know, meaty and kind of challenging enough. But it all culminates on design day where, you know, you show your whole project and your design to the whole school and to the whole faculty. Everybody comes by and you spend the whole day kind of showing off what you did that year. It's a great way to end the degree. So there you have it. That was pretty much everything that you're going to learn in a mechanical engineering degree. You know, every school is a little different. So your curriculum might change a little bit from school to school, but that was pretty much the, the common list of stuff that everybody learns in mechanical engineering. You know, the, the education is truly diverse and uh, pretty unique, and it'll really set you up to go in almost any direction you want after you graduate. But that's it for now, so I hope you guys found that useful, and until next time, thanks for watching, and keep up the good work.